What's the difference between INFP9 in the Enneagram and INFP4 in the Enneagram? We're going to talk about it. It's a big topic and there's a lot to discuss, but here we go. What's up team, it's Sherman here from Geek Psychology. So I got a request to talk about INFP9, INFP4, and the the differences between them or the similarities as well. And maybe a little bit of how you can figure out which one resonates with you a bit more. Enneagram is, is not necessarily the thing I've poured as much energy into as MBTI and cognitive functions, but I do enjoy it. I feel that I have a decent enough understanding of it that I can talk about it and hopefully if you're watching this video and you have your insights, your input on it, you can bring that into the picture too and we can get some discussion going, all right? I guess we'll start out with INFP, what that is. Briefly, um, the, the strengths of an INFP are generally the ability to go deep into our emotions and our values and have some ability to sort them out and use them for conviction and use them to make decisions that really resonate deep within us and to pattern recognize, to connect different ideas outside of us um, and create change and some sort of emergent from there. Uh, usually it comes through art or some sort of music or some sort of expression of that internal feeling self. And we generally struggle with um, with going into our past experiences and recalling them and reviewing them and using them to implement um, some sort of procedure or stability, I suppose, and also to, to plan for progress and to disconnect from our emotions a bit and to just look at things and see like, well, what do I need to do to get to where I want to go? And let's just do it and not worry about how I feel about it. So that's just the brief uh, covering of INFP. And now let's talk a little bit about nine and four. There's, I couldn't really think of a clean, clear way of going through all of these. So I'm just going to be talking about them and how I feel that they resonate. I think that I am an ENFP nine, four, five. That really is the one that, that feels right for me. I deeply connect with four in a lot of ways, but when I was looking at some of my past history and some of the mm, traumas, we'll call them, um, nine seems to be the, the clear winner for, for why I'm doing the things that I do. Let's talk about the nine and four and the, the identity that came from some sort of past experience usually that you've latched onto and that's crystallized who you feel you are within the Enneagram. So nines, there's usually this... Um, this fear of being separated from somebody or something or protection, being casted out alone by yourself. And in order to, to deal with that, this is not really conscious for most people, in order to deal with that though, there's the, the desire to just kind of sacrifice yourself, to, to lose your identity and to merge with somebody else and to make peace, to make things comfortable, to make things um, just no conflict, right? I'm going to take a step back because it doesn't really matter. It's not going to kill me if I do this, if I don't fight for my opinion here, if I don't um, express something perhaps, all right? And the four has its own version of that and its version of that is at some point there was this disconnect and you feel that you are different from everybody else um, special unique flawed you know there are different viewpoints of that different perspectives of that but seeing that everybody is is going through life in a certain way and you just can't seem to do that there, there brings out this feeling lost type energy, this essence of like constantly looking for something that you can't have. Something that if you did grab it, it must not be the thing that you were looking for because you've succeeded 
and you've got that, and that, that can't be it. So there's this constant looking for more and more things that are connected to who you are, your identity, so that you can find yourself and you can return to the, the origin, to the mother, <laughs> or whatever it is. I find that interesting because INFP, both of those, the things that I just talked about, both of those really seem to connect with introverted feeling, in my opinion. For the nine, it's that disconnect and wanting peace, wanting inner peace, wanting outer peace. Introverted feeling wants to have that internal alignment, that harmony, that peace. I slant it a little bit. We. All right. Sorry, I had to fix my camera. It was slowly falling off a box because I don't know how to work the outer world. Um, so there's this, for introverted feeling, there's this desire for inner peace and harmony, alignment, congruency. And for the fours, there's this desire to find your identity. Well, introverted feeling also really wants to do that. It wants to know who's inside and what all these different voices are and which ones are really true to you, which ones are not you, which ones are, you know, it's just constant exploring internally. And so I feel that both of those really do resonate with introverted feeling. And you could bring in other uh, viewpoints of that. Introverted intuition could have this constant pull or push to find an identity or some meaning for things. And then that would go into, if you're an INFP, that would be your critic function, your sixth function, the, the one that's always saying that you're not able to do this. You can't quite get it. You're not good enough to do it. Um, for an INFP 9, I feel, I don't really feel, I do feel a lot of introverted intuition, but I don't feel it as like a critic. I feel my introverted sensing as the one that's saying, you know, you need to be more comfortable. You need to be more careful. You need to blend in a bit more and don't create waves. Don't do extroverted intuition things. So there are tons of pushes and pulls all over the place, which is why I was reluctant to make this video because I can't quite narrow it down to one thing. But I do hope that you're following along with this. I'm gonna continue through in hopes that it, it is helpful in some way. For the nine, the, the general motto, the general quote is I'm comfortable. I'm okay, I'm okay with whatever happens. Whatever you wanna do is, is okay with me. And for four, it's more of this I'm elite, I'm special, I'm unique. And I hope you don't take offense to that in any way. Um, it seems to be, you know, some people don't really like that thought. Um, but I do find it as an empowering thing. I find being comfortable as kind of an empowering thing, but me looking at the four from a different perspective makes me think that like, you know, everybody is special. You know, everybody's unique. So that is, that could be a good way of looking at it. I don't know. Um, the defense mechanism, the way that we protect ourselves for the nine is self-narcotization. It's falling asleep to our deep feelings, uh, especially the scary ones like anger, even love. It's, it's like pushing it down, you know? I, and I, there's a connection between introverted feeling and extroverted thinking as well. You know, I've met a lot of INFPs and when we get stressed out, it could be fours, could be nines, could be fives or whatever. When we get stressed out, we sometimes turn a little bit um, violent. Not necessarily against other people, but like punching walls, punching ourselves, uh, just pushing things around when we go into extroverted thinking. So in my opinion, INFP9 really has that connection, that feeling of anger within that body type of um, eight, nine, and one, which I'm not gonna get into. Um, and in order to deal with that, we just push it down. We just continue to put the cap on, let a little steam out, and then push it down again. And do all that we can to make sure that we are comfortable and peaceful and good people. 
Um, for the fours, it's introjection. And my understanding of that is taking on other people's pain and emotions, negative emotions as well, bringing them in as to something, as, as our own. INFJs really do this a lot. If you've met an INFJ, you probably know that they could walk into a room and just feel some sort of way, like, why, what's going on here? Why is everybody so, you know, whatever, fill in the emotion. And they might not even know. Even the people in the crowd might not really be aware of it, right? But they could leave a room and come back and just feel that. And so I do feel that there's some sort of connection with introverted intuition and introverted feeling within that too. But it's taking on other people's emotions as your own. And I guess that, you know, could make you feel more alive. Whereas uh, for the nines, the self-narcotization makes you feel more peaceful. Something to think about. Uh, the, the passion for the nines and the fours, for the nines, it's, it's laziness, it's sloth, which causes this chief feature of indolence, this habitual uh, funneling of energy into non-meaningful tasks and things like that. Just, you know, going through your Evernotes and, and making sure that all these things are bolded and the bullet notes are nice and everything like that, which really doesn't matter, but it looks nice. Oh, and then I guess you don't have time to do the other stuff that really matters. Crap. <laughs> it's, oh man, if you look at my house, there's tons of like half started projects. I was cleaning over here and then, oh no, I need to go deal with that over there and I go over there and I start doing a little bit over here and it drives my judger wife crazy because there are just tons of open loops, <laughs> tons of things that just haven't been uh, finished, completed. And in doing that, in siphoning off my energy to all these different places, I don't actually get anything done. And it makes me appear lazy, which I feel that I'm, I'm working hard. <laughs> I'm just not accomplishing anything. And uh, for the fours, it's envy. And that envy causes melancholy. So for the fours, as I talked about a little bit before, like the original trauma often comes from being separated from the father or the mother and just feeling that, you know, why, why have I been casted away? Why am I not good enough to be with this person, with my family or whatever it is? And that brings in this feeling of envy in a lot of things. I've known several fours, um, INFP fours, I believe. And it's, yeah, there's this, there's this energy of like wanting to prove to other people that I'm, I'm special, I'm unique, I'm different. And, and I'm just like you in that sense or I'm not like you in that sense. Like uh, I've seen it before when um, one brother was successful. Uh, this is not my own life. When one brother was successful, the other one would create a little bit of drama so that the attention goes back over to him. And sure, it's not intentional. It's not like conscious, but that's how it would happen. And then the focus would go back over to him. It's really interesting. and because there's this constant feeling of envy or feeling not complete in that sense, um, there's a lot of sadness, right? If, if you always feel that you are not good enough in some way, you're not going to feel chipper and happy all the time. And you get that INFP4 or just the four energy of like, just sadness, this melancholy and woe is me and, and life is so dreary and I can't figure it out and everybody else is so happy and you know my life is not going the way it should be. I remember when I was in um, middle school I was going through a lot of stuff with my parents divorce and um, I, I think I cried in science class or something like that yeah and uh, my teacher asked me what, what the problem was and I said I'm having a bad life I wasn't laughing when I said it. I was fully serious. She laughed. 
She thought that was funny. Uh, but oh, that drove me crazy. Because I felt like I was having a bad life. And I, this is why I do feel that I connect to four in a lot of ways, too. Um, but the desire to push down my anger and the original crystallizing of my trauma of separating from, um, uh, from causing problems and waves and, and just melding with whatever's happening in order to maintain a happy, healthy home and, and to be a good child, uh, I feel it's stronger. So what else? The trap. I find this interesting. The trap for the nine is the seeker. The trap for the four is authenticity. Authenticity, personality hacker, ambulance going by. Um, so seeking, I feel, is getting trapped in extroverted intuition. Getting trapped in introverted feeling and not creating some sort of right action, not creating some sort of intentional control of your life as a nine. And for the four, it's constantly seeking as well, right? Authenticity, trying to find yourself, which is a very INFP thing, right? To, to dig into who, who am I? Why am I this way? You know, who am I like? Who am I not like? Who do I like? Who do I not like? What are my values, my beliefs, and that internal structure of emotions? And in this context, who am I? And in this context, who am I? And yes, it's a massive project to, to dig into, right? To discover who you are. <laughs> yeah. Um, and, and so the, I guess one of the last things I'll talk about here is the, the path for growth. I'm not talking about moving through the Enneagram as much as um, the, the path for the nine is right action. It's taking appropriate action. F, I, and T, E are really all about how should we act? What is the right way to act as a person? And I feel that through growth, an INFP nine really gets control over their internal feelings, and then the ability to bring that out through TE, through extroverted thinking, to make a, a structure, to get the gears working together, to get all your, your internal people in the right bus going the right direction. For the fours, it's equanimity, it's balance of emotions. It's knowing that things are as they are for a reason, and this is my understanding of it, and, and your ability to grow comes from accepting that things are this way. Accepting that, you know, everybody has their flaws. You have your flaws, you have your strengths as well, and bringing them in together to balance is how you really get more control over your life and your emotions and your identity, and, and you become a better, stronger, person through that and you have more awareness of your emotions and you don't um, create problems to feel alive right um, whereas you know the nine is, is like I'm just not going to do anything I'm not going to cause any issues I'm going to just back out of everything and really just disappear and lose their body lose their identity. And so I think INFP 9s and 4s are both about seeking the self, searching for who you are. And it's difficult, <laughs> as is everything, right? But I hope that this video was informative. I hope it was helpful. I hope it let you see a little bit of INFP 9s and 4s. Um, like I said, Enneagram is not the thing I've put as much time into, but I do feel that I have an understanding of it. And I, I really like it. I like it a lot. It just it has that story element, that human component that the cognitive functions don't really have unless you personify them like I've done because <laughs> that's what I do with everything, right? So, um, yeah, I hope this helps you feel whole 
I hope this helps you uh, learn more about your identity and helps you become a hero. All right, keep up the lifelong questing. Good luck, have fun. Peace.